going out of town Thursday, the 16th of November, so I won't be making videos or doing my regularly scheduled broadcast. Uh, I'll be hanging around, though. I, I'm carrying my laptop, so I may broadcast a bit. I'll be back uh, Sunday, the 19th, uh, so I'll, I'll do something then and probably a makeup broadcast Monday uh, at 10 p.m., but you guys should have seen how Tiptoe Chick reacted to the video I made. Do you see what happens when uh, I try to actually diffuse a situation uh, on a scale like YouTube? Uh, I removed the video because, well, I left my heart open and she ripped it out. So I'll move along now and teach you how to dismantle a nuclear weapon. I've had this conversation a few times on my radio show and thought I would make a video about it. Iran one day will probably have them. North Korea already does. America has a whole assload of them. How do you stop a nation like Iran from making them? First, you don't threaten them. The United States has already said that military intervention is an option. Iran called them on the challenge and conducted a war game demonstration. Iran wants to develop nuclear fuel for reactors that will provide electricity. How do I know this? Because that's what they said. Most people nowadays simply accept that Iran would like to have nuclear weapons and support whatever action is necessary to stop them. But I recall a time in 2002 when the United States even presented evidence of an enemy nation possessing weapons of mass destruction, and it turned out to be bullshit. How do I know this? Because there weren't any. There also wasn't uh, a lot of things the U.S. said was there, like links to Al-Qaeda and people happy to see the U.S. I'll lay that old news aside, though, and go back to a statement I made earlier, which is that Iran called out the U.S. Russia tried to calm the situation by offering to refine the fuel in Russia and ship it to Iran. Iran politely refused. Iran insists that they do it on their soil by their people. The United States had, had backed that idea, and it seems everyone else did too. However, the problem came to a roadblock when Iran said no. So here we are again, a political stalemate where the true intentions of a nation are assumed and acted upon. Iran has now started the, the uh, enrichment process anyway and refused to stop. Long-standing sanctions by the U.S. still stand. I don't think Iran should have nuclear weapons. Uh, I don't think North Korea should have them. And for that matter, no one should, but we can't have everything and nothing all at once. i got to say, though, before I go assuming that that's what they're after, I'd like to call them out on it. This is not as complicated as you might think, and it can be mutually beneficial both for Iran and the U.S. First thing, the international community offers to allow Iran their enrichment, provided they have international inspectors who are free to come and go to any location and that they stay full-time within their borders. Iran has two options that will identify intentions. If the answer is yes, then they really want to be peaceful, apparently. They'll understand that people are willing to work with them, and may even decide, if it was their intention to develop nuclear weapons, to not make nuclear weapons based on that offer, simply because they wouldn't feel so threatened anymore, especially if it's the U.S. that initiates the deal. If the answer is no, then stricter action actions could be taken because it would be a little bit safer to assume, wouldn't it? Second, the U.S., now in some moderate position with Iran, can finally take them up on their offer to help in Iraq. Yes, I said they offered. More specifically, they've offered twice. The U.S. has flatly refused both times. If they actually involved Iran in Iraq, there's an ex exit strategy, one that would mm, help. <laughs> it wouldn't 100% work, and neither would just pulling out. It's not a complete one. I wouldn't support a complete pullout. The U.S. could take a more arbitrary position in Iraq. With the cohesiveness of the U.S.-Iran bond, the people would see that the U.S. is actually trying to work in their benefit. Another added benefit, the U.S. could look neutral, working for the interests of Sunni and Kurds alike, as well as Shiite by allowing Iran to come in, whilst allowing the Iranians to quell most of the Shiite violence themselves, mainly Shiite. Honestly, if the U.S. were to pull out tomorrow, the Iranians would walk right in behind them anyway and help the Shiites gain more footing. But if the U.S. allowed Iran in, Iran would participate because they would have been essentially given a second chance. With the U.S., with uh, diplomacy in the Middle East, with the nuclear thing, not to mention Iran ca has kind of an interest in the whole matter, considering they border Iraq. If the two nations could work together on these two problems, it would set a major example for the Middle East, and over time the entire world. A government could be agreed upon in Iraq that could prevent future Iranian aggression. Thing is, 
Iraqis would love to see someone from the Middle East actually involved there instead of just the U.S. The U.S. government is stupid for not taking the Iranians up on their offer and even dumber for occupying Iraq, which is right next door to Iran, and telling the world that Iran is actively building nuclear weapons when they are only assuming. It goes to show that the U.S. wants no friends in the Middle East, only the ones they create by pointing a gun at them. Do you actually think that by occupying Iraq, sanctioning Ir Iran, and disregarding real information as to their nuclear ambitions, that the U.S. is making Iran feel safe, being Iraq's neighbor? If they really didn't want to build nuclear weapons to begin with, with this line of thought, I would tend to agree that they'll end up very much like North Korea, paranoid, alone, and capable of making a bomb. The U.S. is pounding on their door and requesting nothing. They aren't selling anything useful. They're only threatening them and making them wish they'd started the nuclear program earlier. The U.S. did it to North Korea. They gave them the technology. Then they left them unregulated. And then they embargoed them. And now North Korea is laughing all the way to the mushroom cloud. I try not to assume much. I decide things uh, based on exhausting all possible scenarios and strategies. And clearly, U.S. actions will be responsible for the paranoid creation of a makeshift nuke by the Iranians unless they change their policy now. Because if it wasn't Iran's intention to build a bomb, it either is now or it will be soon. Yeah, Bush is an idiot.